好的，现场球迷呢，以及来自各地的朋友，大家午安，大家好。我们灯会精彩赛事呢，即将就开始了。我们的场灯呢，即将要做一个关闭的动作。我们请还没入座的球迷呢，请尽速入座。那等会呢，如果场灯已经关闭，那也请球迷呢，在走动的时候呢，也要注意自己的安全。我们的场灯即将要做关闭了，也可以请两队的球员呢，可以到我们的休息区稍作休息。那请球迷呢，也赶快尽速入座，谢谢。Wanted me to lie, wanted me to cry, wanted me to die. I, 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 I'm staying alive, I'm staying alive, I'm staying alive, I'm staying alive. Yeah. Try me a hundred times. Wanted me to lie, wanted me to cry, wanted me to die. I, 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 I'm staying alive, I'm staying alive, I'm staying alive, I'm staying alive for real. For real, for real. Put my feelings aside. You want me to die? Well, let me. I'm standing alive. Supposed to be one of a kind. You put no miles. I thought you was down for the ride. I'm trying to turn up a style. We blowing Chanel. She need everything in the size. She in some shit with another guy. I don't even care. Whenever I see you, mine. She's the head of the game, standing on me. I'm tall, definition of P. Little nigga turned superstar, but I fuck a girl like I'm still in the streets. Every spot. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. 现场来自台湾各地球迷，大家晚大家好，欢迎大家来到凤山体育馆来欣赏我们联盟唯一一场的热身赛赛事——少赛热身赛。今天精彩赛事呢也非常精彩，要呈现给大家。等会第一场赛事将是由我们台西梦想家来出战桃园葡航葡园领航员篮球队。那这边呢，我必须要先听听看我们两队的球迷，你们的热情的声音在哪里？谢谢。那本场赛事呢，非常感谢我们一期直播冠名赞助。另外呢，在我们的赛事当中，也非常感谢探索马里餐饮集团。给三十我们的赞助，我们的折价券以及优惠券，只要我们在这场赛事组队的球员投进一颗三分球，就送出十组的折价券以及优惠券。这边呢，今天组队的球员呢，就是我们的梦想家，所以梦想家球迷呢，今天要特别用力、认真的帮梦想家加油，好不好？我们希望呢，这个折价券以及优惠券可以送给现场所有朋友。当然，还要再一次将大家掌声来谢谢我们探佐马里餐饮集团，将掌声送给探佐马里餐饮集团。好，话不多说，两队球员也已经准备好了，也相信现场球迷朋友你们也准备好了，今天精彩赛事就将呈现给大家。OK， Let's go。二零二二二三，巴西联盟少赛热身赛比赛正式开始。首先为大家介绍桃园璞园领航员篮球队。背号六号关达佑，七号施延宗，八号李伟罗，十二号李家康。
十五号破破陈冠群，二十二号王宏汉，三十号小白白耀成。六十九号，卢俊祥。接下来为大家介绍先发五人 ，Starting Five， 二十一号，陈立焕。二十五号，李正。二十七号。赵正阳，二十八号施晋勇，最后一位是我们四十二号 Number Forty Two 沃徐本，总经理陈新安，总教练 c a m i l o s 助理教练 Gomez。杨怡峰、黄启峰，技术教练唐伟杰，演员教练刘年杰。接下来为大家介绍身穿浅色球衣的台新梦想家篮球队，背号三号老吴吴家俊，七号林耀宗。八号王正元，十三号蓝宝设计 Miller， 十四号吴永胜，二十八号卢冠良。三十号，吴松伟。八十八号，周伯成。接下来是台新梦想家先发五人 ，Starting Five， 背号是一号阿吉林俊基。背号十五号 ，Number Fifteen。Pointer， 背号二十三号，杰肯尼。二十六号，魔兽李德威。又是背号三十四号，篮板双提帽，大 B Q Baker。总教练 Julius， 助理教练 Thomas， 刘文和赖柏林，球员发展总监田磊，领队韩俊凯，请双方球员互相握手致意，也请双方进行最后的赛前暖身。这边也为大家介绍本场比赛执法裁判王振峰、重秀慧、王立昌。
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, seniors and youth. Day two of the Southside preseason weekend of the Plus League regular season before our 2022-2023 campaign begins. The new look Talyan Warrior of Pilots take on the Formosa Taishin Dreamers, who were victorious yesterday in their opener against the Lioneers. Of course, none of these games will count in the record books for a regular for any peaks, but interesting to see everybody as they only have this weekend to play in front of a live crowd and all the amenities that come with a plus league basketball game. I'm Ryan Chen, your English broadcaster as always, and on the Mandarin side we have Xiao Wu, Wu Jingqi, and Tai Bao Tai Jingjing. On the Mandarin side, Xiaomi Pai Yuan, he's all the Zongwen, he's all the English on the board. He also has Zongwen on the board, and I think Xiao Wu and Tai Bao will add the Zongwen on the board. Thank you for watching this video. Well, we talk about new look pilots, it kind of starts with the, even the team name. Everyone knows this organization for their blue red look, but when they joined the Plus League, they had two operations, and now they've merged it completely. When it comes to players and coaches for the team, there's been a ton of changes with the pilots as they finished in last place at 7 and 22 last season. Well, what did they do? They traded Wu Jachu, Hayden, and Manuel Ling Aldon to the Dreamers in exchange for Calvin and a pick. Well, that turned into four picks. Obviously, Sun Li Huan's a veteran, but then first overall, Mayao Zhangzheng, Ethan Bialta, Wayne Li Zui, and Andy Ding Undi. Talk about changes. They also have brought in coach Eric Caminos. Last year, spent time with the Taichung Sun. And uh, that connection has also brought in Sani Sakasini. Well, Sani is still abroad, taking care of some other obligations, so the team will be playing with their two imports. At the preseason, you're allowed to register three just for the team to really test out everybody's fit and let them have some nice run. There's Coach Camino. Coach Sean suggested he might be an interesting list on air. That was a lot of fun yesterday. He's got Coach Gonzalez sitting next to him. Also a new hire for the Puyren organization. Minos, at least with the Suns, what we observed last season was they run a lot of spread, pick and roll, and sometimes a lot of Spain variants, trying to put a lot of emphasis on spacing, which the Pilots, at least last year, didn't start as such. They started the year with Coach Don Tony Tun, who ran a lot more of the Princeton motion offense, which definitely needs a more modern outlook heading into the 2020s. Somebody that I want to pay a lot more attention to is actually captain of the team this year, newly minted captain, number 28, Si Jingyao, who had a all-plus league team season in the very inaugural year, then had a disappointing second season. But in this third season, now have to take on a leadership role, and we'll see how that has worked out for him and the team. There's a lot of number changes, so that's something to also get used to as well. I'm sure a lot of people want to hear about Richie Rivero, the Filipino import, not an Asian import. We don't have that in the Plus League. We'll break, uh, we break down more of that details as the broadcast goes. We got to give some love to the Formosa Taishi Dreamers, the second place team last season, and the second place team in the first season if you count their playoff run. We showed you this. Player transaction graphic, they traded away Calvin Chenlingwan, and then they sent parted away with Sun Ziyang, who's playing with the Sanghua Boili in the SBL. 
They added two free agents from the Fuyu Long Dinos in Ryan Yiguan Liang and Jerry Lobota. And obviously they traded Hayden Ujadri and Animal Ling Yao Maybe just looking for a better fit or a different fit. On an import side, they brought back Brendan Gilbeck, who looked like he even took one more step forward in a yesterday's game. Handling the basketball, playing the team defensive games. And there's Calvin Chen Li Huan, who's now with his third team in three seasons in the Plus League, was a standout with the uh, Lion Ears before he departed and joined the Dreamers as a free agent. Let's see if you can have a little bit more success with the pilots as he did play with a lot of injuries last season. Try to battle through those. Well, the Dreamers, though they were at the second place in the regular season, they dropped two games at home to start the series against the Braves after having the best home record in the plus league. And then battled the Braves to double overtime before finally falling and losing the series, ending their season. Now they are a great barometer, and maybe something that we'll see with the pilots soon enough. Great barometer for how long it takes for a young core to really come into their own. Well, we don't want to turn over. Kenny, the most senior right member of the team, but Aji now in his third season. Guys like Jay Chen as well, maybe some even like Yang Sun Yen, who might come in later in the season after his military service. All younger players that kind of can't call them rookies for sure, but can also call them experienced by now. The real highlight, though, was their imports, though, including Malcolm Miller and Sir Dominique Boyner. On the pilot side, Ayao Sissinga will start things with a long side Calvin, their first overall pick, Ayao. Sun Tzu and Jason Walker and Li Sun, two centers playing together. For the Dreamers, it's going to be Aji Li Juji, Kenny Chen, Sir Dominique Pointer, Derek Li Zoe, and Brandon Gilbeck. One new referee amongst the crew. And that's crew chief by number nine, Huang Zhenfeng, there in the middle. While the preseason agreed opportunity for the players in the team and the referees also have their preseason meetings. Well, the final possession of the tip arrives with the Dreamer showing off the uh, light-colored C-Town set. The backdoor pass is broken up. So the pilots will get a chance to go on offense first. Might be a little bit confusing. They're the Taoyuan Huyuan pilots, but their jerseys are their city Taoyuan pilots. TYP short as Lincoln knocks down the three. Lincoln played on the Rising Stars team and often started at center in his third season. He's actually still the youngest player in the plus league. And he tries to answer from the corner a little short. Here come the pilots on the run. Calvin, one man to beat. Left hand is good. Right up the floor, but that's a quick 5-0 start for the proverbial road team. This is really kind of neutral for the two teams participating. The Steelers will play again tomorrow night. That's something, yeah. Mayo is his aboriginal name, and at least a tradition brought over from the Chinese Professional Baseball League here in Taiwan. If players have aboriginal names, we use that as their English name. Green by Gilbeck, picks up the pass and picks up the foul, bounces it in though. Kind of took an awkward shot. He's gonna have to try to shake off his core injury. A little shot to the wrist. Pretty good answer by the seven foot dreamer. There we see maybe the Ken Linton's shoulder. Free throw is good, though. Nice 
A little bit of pressure and Achi cross meshed up on Maya. There's almost a 20 centimeter difference. Taiwan is a league known for having a lot of guards, a lot of competitive play out there as our guys don't grow as tall. Washburn over to Ken. Corner jumper is no good. The Washburn last stop in Japan. Trying to block out Gilbeck as Sujiyama comes over and fouls on the back end. And Gilbeck already taking a couple shots. That high-low pass started by Derek Lee, though, way. So quick three fouls for the pilot. The only thing that's the main thing that takes consistent is Aji knocks down the easy three. Just an easy flick of the wrist, so Miles answer is an air ball and will bounce harmlessly out of bounds. The Mark Andrew broadcast table if you're following along. See the pick and roll and drop coverage. Well, I'm still learning how Camino gets with the defensive scheme as Calvin running ahead. Amongst three dreamers, easy block by Gilbeck. On the outside, a, another air ball. Got to be a little bit drafty over by me. That's Sijiao, not quite the. Uh, comeback season, comeback start that we expected. But again, it's still the preseason. Switching out of Songsan High. As Gilbeck skies high with the little push shot. Just like that, the Dreamers have a three-point lead. Pilots well, not gonna exactly converting in transition. Let's see how they do in the half court. Kenny? On Kevin Washburn's mid-range, no good. Long rebound, back to the Pilots. Pick and roll, and overshoots it. But look what I found, two points. Made back. I found it, yeah, after another air ball. Let's, let's start keeping count of that. One, two, three air balls. Not that really counts for anything, but something for us to follow along. Either way, gets his first attempt, no good. In yesterday's game, the old veteran did start, but only played 19 minutes. Kevin plays for three. And Kenny will come away with it. As we mentioned, Kenny Chen. A lot of awards. Most improved all defensive team. I believe he also makes the all plus league second team. Tricky pass, tic tac toe, and Granny Gilbert finishes with a two hand slam. Foul on the pressure, but let's get another look at that one. So, can he start things off? Interesting find for Pointer cutting behind two pilots. Maybe a little unfortunately for that trio, there's been a ton of great plays from yesterday's game. Substitution for the pilots as they get Justin Udrishan, who was on the All Plus League second team, sixth man of the year. Out of bounds, Zhiyao on the sideline. Here's Coach Camino. Whenever the new coach has maybe Coach Marchand, Coach Greg would even say, hey, first year, trying to put in a lot of things, but you also have to pace yourself, not overload. Here's Malcolm Miller, checked into the game. Number 13, 35-point debut in the preseason. 
Talk about debut in high school performances. As Hachi spins and swirls in the two. Tough shot there, but somebody the local fans will appreciate. Manny Harris had a 40-point game in hooking for his debut. Kenny, the steal and the reverse, wow. Okay, Kenny Chen providing some highlights. Pointer, Miller. Oh, we'll see that part of it. Tons of excitement from the Dreamers bench and the crowd here. Giving their applause. Well, after a 5 0 start, it's 16 to 7 as we have our first time out of the game. That's our first break in the action, and thanks for watching Plus League Basketball. We'll be right back. you can help the Plus League grow, leave a like on all our streams as we get a couple substitutions for the pilots. It's Shao Bai Bai, Yao's Hood, Pong Pong with his brand new 15. And number eight, there he is. Thanks for sticking with us through a little bit of our delays here in the stadium. Rivera receives the pass. He is the youngest import in plus league history at 24 years old. Getting guarded by Kenny Chen. Pong Pong. This is it out. Third overall pick, Ethan. Drives and kicks, drives again. Tough shot. He does hit rim on that, so I will not tally another air ball, but not a great offensive possession for the Pilots. Dominique with a fancy crossover. Derek slow with it. And called for the three seconds. He was in the paint when he caught it. Almost a good play. Just after a couple possessions, Kenny will come off for Ryan. Guanliang. On the Dreamer side, former pilot Hayden. Wu Jiaqing is guarding number 30, Ethan. Pong Pong with a lane. Right-handed layup. Takes it off the glass and in. Getting one back. The layup is made over there by 28, Ryan. Arrow over to teammate Justin. Best shooter for the Pilots, knocked down the corner three. Quickly down the floor, out of bounds, lost by Sir Dominique. And they say it's Pilots' ball. Quick foul, though, on the pressure as Justin got his name from former Puyan teammate two seasons ago, Jordan Tolbert. And they played together in the Plus League last season. No waiting on news for Tolbert as Rivero chased out defender, gives up a pump pump block. 
by Soborshing. Almost a good play, but here comes the Dreamers who blow a layup. Miller. Hero yet to attempt the shot, showing off some good handles. Pulls up for three, he stops, cuts, and goes down for three. Now just a three point deficit for the pilot. Over in the corner, Porter, pointer, excuse me, points away a screen. Gonna take Justin off the dribble. Up corner, and at number 22 will sometimes run things, uh, certainly last season, when he was on the floor. Ball, ball. They say he got pushed out of bounds from the collect the basketball over by us on the broadcast side. Number 88, it's over with Hood with a foul. He goes by Jerry, so we have now two Jerry's in the plus league. So the stoppage in play as we see the tough jumper. For those of you who the Taiwanese audience, Rivero, the star, and then the championship at the university level in the Philippines, who won the title last May. So also played in the Williams Jones Cup here in Taiwan, so some of the more experienced and savvy basketball fans here have already saw him and have some impression of him as he gets reintroduced to the floor in this preseason action already with the ankle breaker. There we see Sean Chen, general manager of the Pilots. He does have the record for the youngest in court. He is not the shortest at 185 centimeters. That title belongs to John Gillen, who was a career, well, I should say, taller pilot last season when they started the year off. He then went on to another taller basketball team here in Taiwan, funny enough. Pompo got two free throws and he hits the first. Okay. Oh, one of two trip as Hong oh, Hong commits the foul on the rebound. Just like yesterday, we're kind of having a slow first quarter. Now the scoring efficiency is maybe a little bit better than you might expect. Already 36 combined points for seven and a half minutes of action. For Ryan, three. Athletic rebound. Pointer keeps it alive now. Miller. That's a classic throwback. Already four points. Now Justin from the left side missing a three point attempt. Pilots did take the fewest threes, and it was an obvious big margin to begin the season. But there's a block shot with a new number 15, Chen Guan Chen. Able to protect the back line there. Wow, and Ethan played with the Rising Stars, and my 
that kick. Fortunate for him. Credit for the turnover, though. He takes it right back. Look at that Isil Dasha down here in Gaoshou. All day long, line it up. Nice flash of it. sidelines for the Dreamers in this matchup. He did have the head coaching duties in last season's preseason for a game or two. Justin throws it right to the Dreamers, so there's been a lot of turnovers, and that's unfortunately kind of the calling card of the team from last season. Bad miss with the left hook, that's Jerry. By Hayden. He did have the most in yesterday's game of five. Wu Jinxiang last season averaged a 35% from three point range. Not a crazy mark, but second highest on the team. Certainly the most attempts and the most made. This time he weighs it in with the right hand. So right now on the floor, number six, third year player, Juan Da Yo. There's a foul down low. Kenny was slipping it over to Jerry. Substitutions as fresh into the game is number 12, Jackie Lee. Jack Hung. Now, a lot of these pilots actually, who maybe you could, could say are holdovers from the first season and the second season, a lot of them come out of what we call Politi, the National University of Sport. That's Probably not surprising. Also in the city of Collier. Other alumnus include the two bigs for the Steelers, Tank and Lance Alfred, number 23. Ken way out high on the handoff. Oh, and trying to get a tough finish. Not able to. Look what I found. Another easy lay in on the rebound. He's got to work a little bit harder on those. Box out and probably hard to do, but some of the secondary box outs too. Miller takes the deep three, six made yesterday. Bandayo gives it up. All hands nails the three. Pressure on Miller. Got a crease. This is a close to the basket. Couple possessions left. Let's see if the pilots can get up on top at the end of the first. Find the spacing or maybe the matchup. Slip back door and Jackie will put it in for two. Miller took a little bit of a tumble in the mix up. Nice the clock, yes, so the Dreamers try to find that best look. Got a side mid match, and they switch out of it. Penny shaking, baking, going right. Touch finish, got it. Playing time left, and Juan Dayo with it, turns it over. Kenny won't take the shot, and uh, took a little too long. So a one-point game after one. And the Dreamers, after an impressive win, are playing on a back-to-back. -back. Pilots, their first debut with a new look.
Thanks for watching Plus League Basketball. We'll head to a break.第二节比赛快结束之前好然后挺好好的,绿区的好像没拿到,对不对,绿区的。Some faces in the crowd, and maybe by proximity, there's a lot of Seatown jerseys, a lot of Seatown signs. After being a strong contender in the first two seasons, the Dreamers want to capture that title. Interestingly enough, Coach Julius, in yesterday's post-game press conference expressing his satisfaction, shall we say, with having his whole team together in the preseason with time to have a really strong open. Ayao maneuvering around and stepping on the baseline. Looks like all these teams are trying to drive left on little Achi. Not quite worked out yet. Another turnover for the Pilots, as we see, stepping on that light blue line. Going through the middle, Miller able to hit the shot. There's a mismatch, though, as Zienzo, wearing number seven this season, doesn't get his chance on the block. Calvin to Washburn, his elbow jumper, no. Right now, the mid-range proving difficult for the Pilots. Kenny doubled, in trouble. Gets it out to Achi. Nobody guards him, and he's able to make the adjustment and hit the one close. action for the Pilots, but they can't hit the shot as Gilbeck again will try to bring it down court. Take the tough right hand to layup and they call a foul. Jason Washbourne, last man back. Washburn listed at 213 centimeters, which is the same as Gilbeck. Conversion-wise, that's right about seven feet, zero inches. Speaking of Manny Harris from before, also born from Michigan. Maybe on the Long laundry list of things that Coach Julius wants Gilbeck to improve on in his rather young career. At the line, he shot 
49 for 77 at the charity stripe, which is good for about 71%. Washburn. To the other side, and Gilbeck will be block attempt, but they call a foul first. The pilot did a good job to find that opening. Bunabuth, the block to the pass, the reaching foul down the middle. I guess the producer trying to tell us how impressive Gilbeck was to recover and get a block on the backside. His first free throw, though. So if I didn't mention before, the Pilots are the only team in the plus league to have zero retention when it comes to their three imports. Last year, they had Devin Robinson, Jordan Tolbert for most part of the season. Of course, I mentioned John Gillen before, and Mezlovich. Aji knocked out another three. He's got 10 points to his name. Ball reverse and uh, a sliding foul. See, and Jones was going baseline. See Aji, interesting with the uh, right left foot work. Typically likes the reverse. And the foul previously has off screen. Calvin misses the corner three. And commits the foul in transition. We saw a couple times unsportsman likes called in transition. This one, defenders behind him. Got a hand on the basketball. Just a common foul. <laughs> Trying to make room and a tough make. Monty with five straight points now. Now he's going to apply some pressure. An interesting foul from an interesting spot, I would say, from the officials. Ooh, there we see the finish even through that arm contact. Anyways, Calvin played 177 minutes with the Dreamers, but in only 27 games, so that spreads him out to about 22 per contest. Washburn trying to maneuver around Gilbeck. Commits the foul underneath the basket. Second personal. About three minutes into the second quarter as we see maybe the lack of days of the pass. So Derek Bidoe will take his place. He's loose with it and ends up stepping on the line out of bounds. And yet another turnover by the Pilots. Well, they were a lot more competitive in the first quarter, but the second has not worked in their favor. Kenny will head out for Pointer. A little bit more mustard on that pass as Derek can't corral it. But over on the other side, Jackie, Jackson this time running the length of the floor. Right now, the live ball turnovers. Hachi, at least in the preseason, has had a lot of possession for hand on the basketball a lot longer than we were used to as Washburn now fouls Doe on the rebound. Here, here, here. Another 
look at it. I guess that is a little bit tough to take, but. The way going to the ground certainly was eye-catching. He's not exactly the most spry player anymore. Kind of sort out a substitution situation. As the Dreamers now throw it out of bounds. Pointer finds the nice opening in the uh, courtside fans. As we mentioned yesterday, the Steelers brought in grandstands to increase the seating capacity. So according to the general manager of the Steelers, Kenny, the 500 people going to be down on the floor around here. Eight point lead for the Dreamers. Ryan commits the foul. To let you guys in on the information, the referees did have a meeting as the entire staff this morning. Can't reveal exactly what they talked about, but there's an errant pass and a pointer. Trying to find an opening. Now it's Aji who will pull out some space. Over to Ryan, his three is good. They're learning, he really likes that left side corner. So Creighton helping out with the uh, facilities and the hardware around here. Not dressed for either of these games as Aji jumps the pass. From the other side, can he do it? Yes, he can. Two straight threes for number 28, the newcomer for the Dreamers. IL spins away from it and spins a pass. Pom Pom knocking everybody out of the way. But he will be called for the offensive foul. Gonna look at Aji. Over to Ryan. And on the second attempt. If I'm correct, we haven't seen one of the other point guards in Jeff. But when you add Hayden, which I bring into the mix, it's kind of interesting how they'll figure out that rotation or what the different roles might be. Ball bounced out of bounds for the pilot. Vera was the closest one to it. That makes it three previously lifetime Three long Dinos players lead the way, Lu Guanxiang and Zhou so Boten. We'll head to the bench first. There we see Jonathan Han giving some encouragement with the players heading to the bench as we have another break.就有机会可以换得我们由高手钢铁人所能提供的奖品没错就是你的来一手比一手比七比的非常好你是我这两届第一次看到七比对的给他一个掌声好等我来这位小姐一跟七很好对对对对那个七是对的哎都可以都可以
put it in your calendars. November 5th, 2022, is the Plus oh, League no, 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 season no, no, opener. Broadcast, broadcast right here on the Plus League YouTube, YouTube channel or our partners at Mosa Television and Momo Television. Been a healthy crowd for two straight days. They're here to see the players in action once again. Only an abbreviated offseason, it feels like. Rivera right now running the show for the pilot. Back door to Mayo, and he slips out of bounds. Good play design there, catching the Dreamers aggressive. Maybe Pointer had something to do with affecting the pass. They rotate it over, and look, Miller flies free for the easy two. Dreamers have broken open, and Coach Thomas maybe looking to make some subs. Kind of lucky break for the pilots as they call a kickball on the strip. Fan favorite number 30, Wu Sung Wei, will come into the game as we see the acrobatics by the Dreamers. Justin knocked it down. Again, trying to slice through the defense, but this time it's poked out of bounds. This game, hey! he's got eight points. A little bit of ways away from yesterday's mark. We got a substitution to bring Manimal in for the first time against his former team. Looks like it's on Doway. Might have been tough because he was sandwiching Rivero there, but uh, might be the 24 who played the smarts on him. He'll go to the line and try to stop the bleeding for the pilots. Sometimes players really could follow the adage of playing defense without your hands. With the way players try to deceive the referees with the hand fighting. After the first, a very quick routine for Rivera, I'm learning. In fact, pretty much no routine. He just fires away after picking it up. On the other side, a Three well short. That's Wu Sung Wei who's taking his first shot of the game. Foul call over on this side. in succession and Doe will be sent to the line.
communicate something with the uh, number nine official there. Short with the free throw. Interesting call. That's our new official. Might be a lane violation then on the pilots. show off their weave and right now Mayo trying to stay in front of Pointer forcing the miss there back to Justin his three is on the way and down ooh fancy left handed lay Pointer gets it back Making Euro his way, that's his calling card, but Bielbeck was there for the stop. And well, look what I found. Gilbeck missing the close putback. Not the fret though, he'll get plenty of those during the season. Timeout by the pilots. They're trying to still find some better form. The Washburn and Rivera, we expect getting the lion's share of the minutes on the import side of things as their third import has yet to arrive on the Dreamer side. Getting a lot of run for their team in two days. Xiang, after making the all second team, Starting this game off the bench, and maybe that's something we can expect from him during the regular season as well. And an interesting story in the SBL, as in some ways he was a twice drafted player. And so they created a Wu uh, Chen rule for him about signing up for a draft and uh, pulling your name out. Breaking the huddle with the same personnel group that they went into it with. Coach Julius talking with a number two assistant, Troy. Pong Pong loose with the dribble off his own foot. Hayden will pick it up, get the lay in. Or maybe they give credit to Brandon Gilbeck. Another sloppy turnover. To go for the mismatch, but the pass doesn't come. Well, hop in a shot. Rivero's three is a pretty one. And the made shot, though, as the Dreamers continue to break open this lead. Oh, 
Washburn isolated, pulls up for the jumper, no. Caminos is unaffected by it. To the corner, all the way shot. Rebounds and out, and Manuel there for the effort rebound. His reload, yes. Breaking it open again. Dreamer has already scored 60 plus in yesterday's first game as Washburn catches from Rivera for two. Justin able to hit the three. Rivera with the assist. Junior start paying a lot of attention to him, in, and he's giving those open looks for his teammates. Okay, the whistle first. They received the driving kick. Hayden probably didn't need to retreat in. Got a line change for the pilots. Back into the socks is a hockey substitution. So they were short a player, so number 27 heads back out there. with Maya, which may be kind of funny because once again, teammates on the Rising Stars team. High up and Uso Moe able to hang on to it. Running low on time, ball ricochets out of bounds. Stay with the Dreamers. Not exactly the smooth offense maybe the team wants. Pointer takes the three, bounces out. Ethan takes a tough shot, no good. Ken can't finish at the hoop on the putback. That might be a tough call to take. There's Derek screening Hong Ho Han. Gilbeck will come back into the game. Only uh, 27 seconds left. Another chance for the pilots. 
High post to a handoff. Ethan hops through, leaving Maya open, beating the clock, and can't finish with the bucket. Down the other way, a foul called. Not exactly the best execution of the transition defense. That'll be free throws. And that's kind of the tough thing about the pro game. If you miss a shot, the other team's going to have an advantage. So that's why coaches talk a lot about smart shot selection. going to halftime as the Dreamers played their second preseason game. The Pilots make their debut. You're watching a plus. Hello 所以呢總共還有兩位我們請東門工作人員下來好還有一位兩位都到了嗎好總共四位還有我們參加的請過來好 OK 謝謝 好，但是呢，我们游戏规则不一样，我们不能在同一个区域一直投，所以禁区一球，罚球线一球，三分线一球，你禁区跟罚球线都是两分，三分线投进就三分。好，每一个点到投一次才可以让一直轮，一直轮
On the Mandarin side is Xiao Hu and Tai Bao taking care of you guys on the Mandarin broadcast. Tai Qing Ting, Tai Bao, who's going to be working all six games like I have. Where there's the combined team stats where. Anyways, excuse us. The pilots have committed five 15 turnovers to the Dreamers' eight. They've shot the three pretty decently, but kind of putting together their defensive scheme has been an issue that the Dreamers exploited, whether it's with Aji or the, whether it's been the imports. We're looking at some of the highlights of this fight, starting off 5-0. to zero. The Dreamers went on a run to take the lead and force a timeout at 16-9, to nine, and they have not looked back since. Yesterday we had a lot of excellent plays, and Kenny Chan himself trying to Make the highlight reels himself today. Talked about the younger team trying to get into form and be a front runner, in fact, in the league. And we'll have to see in a month's time. Though they do not start with opening weekend, it'll be the Braves Lineers, Braves Steelers. And later in the evening time, we'll get to see Coach Marshawn and the King. They'll make their debut against the Braves. Rounding out the six teams of the Plus League to show up in this preseason stop, the only preseason stop of 22-23. See, maybe in little bits and spurts is Ricky Rivero, Richie, excuse me, Rivero, the Filipino import player for the Pilots. Showing off good handles, showing off the soft touch from three. Don't need more of that in the second half. Well, one more break before we break things down for our, our second segment. Two, one. Ay, ah, too crazy. This is also two points. Let's give a clap. Thank you. Thank you. Last one. Come on. Where is your team? 国王的球迷是不是？好，国王的球迷，哎、欸，来这场干嘛？好，我们梦想家跟李航远没拿到，那应该 OK 吧？超过两分应该没什么问题哦。如果没有两分，我叫 PK 了哦。好、哦，好，来，老师音乐给他，听到 Go 才接头。Go， 好，两分有了。那罚球线呢？如果是球投进，我们比赛就直接结束了，好不好？来，三分球。用力一点，至少来个三分。好，我们碰框而出，那他是一剑。好，小心小心。这个篮下投进，我们就结束比赛了。好，结束比赛，优胜则产出。好，谢谢，我们也谢谢我们以上三位的朋友，谢谢你们，谢谢。好，来，各位朋友，我们要来领奖，要领奖，你有奖品，有奖品。好，我们请到我们场中间呢来做个颁奖的动作，拍个照。好，这是我们高雄钢铁的新产品，我们的头戴一个，来送给你。好，谢谢国王的球迷，谢谢。下一场比赛呢，要认真帮国王加油喽。
Now we brought in Coach Ryan Marchand joining Ryan Chen on the English broadcast here in the Plus League. Hey, Coach, first time with the mic? First time with the mic. It's, uh, you know, it actually makes me a little more nervous to do the broadcasting than it is the game. There's the scoring leaders for the Pilots from top to bottom. That's Justin Lutringshan with 16, Paul Hyam 5. Uh, Rivera with five, Jackie got a couple layups with four, and Lisa started the game with a three, but he hasn't knocked anything in since. Coach, in your observation, playing the pass last year, and maybe just the one half of basketball. Yeah, I think, you know, the big thing for them, new coach, new system, they're learning on the fly. They've, they've had, they haven't had a lot of time to adapt to the new system, but I think, you know, this is a perfect time in the preseason to learn, learn how your players are, Usually you're playing against the same players every single day in practice, so in preseason it's a perfect time to test yourself against someone else, a new system, and it's just a perfect time to grow. There's still more than a month left before the season starts, so it's a really good testing point for all the teams out here. On the other side for the Dreamers, on the screen previously, Gilbeck with 14, Antti 12, uh, Ryan Lugandang with 11, Miller with 8, Pointer with 7, the Dreamers, Coach Julius in his third season, at least with the plus league portion of the Dreamers, kind of changing things up with their import dynamics. Yeah, mixing it up. You know, they definitely have some dynamic players that can play multiple positions, um, guys that are comfortable and strong enough guarding different positions. The more you have players that can guard multiple positions, you know, the easier it is to play guys all across the board rather than at one spot. So I think Coach Julius does a good job of getting the guys in that he knows fits his system and adapting to it. All right, Coach, I asked you a little bit last night, and in your second season, can you reveal a little bit maybe what is the focus for you as a second-year coach of a, shall we say, still a new program, though, in the new Taipei Kings? Yeah, new new program for us. The preseasons, they might be different than a lot of other teams. For us, it's kind of a mix of experimentation and progress for our young guys. We definitely want to give our young players a chance to get out here on the court and play in a situation that they might not have during the regular season. We'll let some of our young guys start. We'll let some of them come off the bench as, you know, first or second sub. Um, you know, we have to sit a lot of players throughout the season during the games. You can only dress 13, so we want those guys to be able to get this experience on court and see a real game film. Now, I guess in a word or two aspirations for the regular season, we'll have to ask you on the other side. We have another break for the second half.好我們這邊也再次提醒大家剛剛拿到呢我們丟的小球很小很小的一個球的朋友呢是換取我們由探索馬里集團所贊助的優惠券以及折價券這個小球呢請到我們的服務處服務台這邊來做兑換請到入口
All right, continuing on that point, Coach, um, does the team set goals like first place in the regular season? Is it win every home game, like in football, perhaps? What yeah. are the Kings thinking? From yeah, we, we have different goals. We have long-term goals. We have short-term goals. Um, the long-term goals, obviously, probably about the same as almost every other team. You definitely want to you know, be in first place. You want to be able to win a championship. But that's the stuff we don't talk about that every day. Our short-term goals right now, still training camp preseason. So we want to run a great training camp, make sure practice every day is with a lot of energy. So in the long term and the short term, we focus on different things depending on which part of the season it is. All right. And maybe we talked a little bit about the pilots, talked a little bit about uh, the Dreamers. I guess we'll get to see them play now. Now, we got to mention, there's a Ryan on the floor. There's also a Ryan in the Lion Ears. And I also heard you. there's several Bryans going around the league too now. A lot of Bryans, a lot of Ryans, uh, a lot of the same names. It, it helps to give a lot of people different nicknames throughout the year so you actually know who you're talking to. <laughs> there's Ryan with the three-point made. And I think pretty much everyone's going to tune us out soon enough. But anyways, for the pilots, it looks like they're starting sub San Santoya subbed out for Justin Wu Jingxiang. Ball hits the referee. Doesn't happen all the time. I think one thing the Dreamers do, they give, you know, they extend their pressure a lot. They extend their pressure. They get teams out of their offense. The pilots were able to do that a little bit with us last year, but they do a really good job of forcing teams out of their offense, getting them into looks that they don't normally want to have. Maybe the worst possession we've seen all afternoon, and Pong Pong turns it into three points. He slipped, he lost the, the concentration, slipped to the basketball twice, and just drains it easily from 40 feet. That's, I guess that will happen more often than you might expect. Yeah, sometimes, you know, being being lucky is better than being good. So, you know, those shots, you know, over the course of the year, you know, there's those are a few turning points throughout the game. You know, being able to hit a couple shots when you don't think you're going to be able to get anything, it really gives the team a little bit of a boost. Moving screen by Gilp, as they say, illegal screen at least. So Derek will come in for him. Aji applying that pressure against Ayao. Over to Justin, he's got another three, missing the mark. Good job using the open space, being able to spread the defense out. You know, that's a big thing in Early transition, secondary transition, if you can get the right spacing, you know, it allows, allows your team to be able to hit the right gaps to attack the open space, makes it easier for everybody else on the floor. Well, let's break the pressure eventually. Washburn with a running hook. That worked previously on the outside for Miller as he drives, dishes. Pull a jumper by Ryan Short. Now, when it comes to the Pilots, for example, who might you expect to be one of their offensive starters this season? You got a lot of candidates, some rookies, some older veterans, and obviously Rivero is a point guard import, but who can you maybe key in on, at least from a broadcaster standpoint? I want to ask you necessarily as a head coach. Right, yeah, that's that's a little bit different, but I think um, there, there's a couple guys that he's he started even from you know the number one pick to some of the guys they have out here on the floor. Right now, I think, you know, all these guys have shown the ability to be able to play, um, you know, especially for some of the rookies at any level. Um, you don't need them to contribute from, you know, a high scoring perspective right away. Even if they can play a role, they can come out and they can play good defense. Uh, sometimes that's the ability to get to be able to be on the floor is just by playing that role in a small in a small role. The foul pong pong 
bumping into Miller. Aji getting the stagger screen, but trapped by Ayao. Derek fade away. He's one of those players who almost likes to make more distance from the basket. It's almost out of a practice habit. Yeah, he's had, you know, he's shown the ability to knock down some shots too. And sometimes you want to see those bigs operate, you know, in and around the basket, try to get some easy ones as well. But I'm sure the fact that he's shooting, you know, those in practice a lot, the coaches want him to be able to develop that because it changes the offense when you have some of your bigs have to stretch out, be able to hit that shot. It forces the defense to guard a lot more space. It makes the offense much, much easier. The Dreamers see Derek take another foul. Might have got away with it early, and then they called something later in the action. But in the end, Jason Austin will head to the line. You know, sometimes that can also be a part of playing really aggressive. Their style of play, they play really aggressive. They're into the ball. Sometimes they're going to foul more often than, than not. But um, you're kind of forcing the refs to put them in a position to make a call or not. Sometimes it goes your way. Sometimes it doesn't. But that's the part of being physical. Hey, free throw. And he might have closed down too much space on Miller. He needs to find a teammate. Push shot is short. And a chance for the pilots to run. Supposed to be in their team ethos. As Justin, fancy crossover, getting really the good. layup. Really good finish. But he's taking his time to get back up after the fall. Now being able to put pressure on the rim early, get into the paints, defense has to collapse. If they don't, you end up getting clean looks at the rim. Well, that'll be our first break of the second half as the Plus League preseason continues. Begun a select game streamed every week for free. Visit B League social media pages for more detail as our league and their league has had some broadcast swaps and some interaction we hope to build on. Dreamers, same five come out on the floor. And Huang Ho Han will come in for the pilots. See the Pilots extend a little bit of pressure too. They did that a lot last year. They have, you know, a good mix of guys. All, you know, a lot of their guards about the same size, but they're big, they're strong, they like to be into the ball. So both teams should be used to playing with a little bit of pressure here. Calvin got his hand on the basketball, and Kenny, they say, did not establish back in bounds. Former teammates going after it on that possession. Attack the doorway with a lot of fouls. Good extra pass to the corner. Io three did catch it exactly in rhythm, but Washburn standing tall. Extra board, extra possession. Calvin from way deep off the back iron. 
you know, usually that's one of the best time after offensive rebounds to kick it out for another dagger three right after offensive rebounds. The defense is usually relaxed for a little bit, so being able to kick that out right off the offensive rebound, sometimes you get the cleanest looks from three right after that. Coach, I think a lot of fans would be interested, and we talked about it a little this before you got on air. The Dreamers almost lose the basketball. One last go at it, pointer, loose with it, and they call him out of bounds, which will give us our chance to talk about, because you only had a day and a half, you said, with the Kings players who made it out to California. Right. But what can you share about your perspective of the four gentlemen that went over, and James and Phil, and the Kings kind of reach out abroad. Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's really, it's really good to be able to have, you know, great ownership that wants to invest in the team, wants to invest in the players. When I talk to them about the idea of doing it, I think the more chance they get to play against a higher level of competition, different level of competition, uh, the better it is for them. If you play against the same players all the time, sometimes you can get in too much of a rhythm, you get too comfortable playing against a different level of guys, training against different guys or seeing how different guys train is really good for, you know, giving you the opportunity to be able to grow your game and get better. Calvin hits the three and then commits the foul on the other end. We'll bring it out on the baseline. So right now, Dreamers actually, maybe because of rotational purpose, don't have any true centers out there. Spain pick and roll action in the middle. Miller getting doubled. Kenny on the other side, driving middle. Tough runner and Manimal's there for the rebound. Tyler did everything but get the basketball back. And a second time. Pointer easy to the hoop. Nice log on to the two. Late, late help there on the defense, but you know, like I said, the more you get into the paint, the more good things happen. Just like here, straight line drive to the basket. If you can't contain the ball one on one. It really, really hurts your team. So, you know, when in doubt, try to get into the paint. Try to force the defense to collapse. Usually, good things happen. out of bounds. Well, Coach Marshawn, I this might be a little bit curious question, but do coaches scout other coaches? For example, Karinas is new to our league, but you might have some film on it as Miller with the athletic putback. Yeah, yeah, to an extent, you definitely want to see what other coaches are doing. Um, you know, one of, one of the unique things is that I learned over the years is being able to implement different things that other coaches do. So that way, when you have scouting reports, you know, not everything is new for the first time. So taking some different ideas from other teams, being able to implement that into your own system, um, you know, not for the full system, but, you know, maybe a little play, a little action here. When you do that and you go to play that team in the future, it makes scouting much easier. You don't have to spend as much time on that action because you see it all the time in your own practices. Line change for the Pilots. That's why they say boxing out is so important because you have athletes like that at the highest level. I think here you get a lot of guys, you know, not just here, but everywhere you have, you know, you might be in the right position, but rather than creating space on box out, you guys, you want to out jump the guy rather than creating space and going up for the rebound. So being able to find contact, stand that, stand that guy you're boxing up out, um, makes a big difference rather than trying to out jump him every time. Again, this guy's high for the rebound. Hayden's call for the foul on the reach. 
And he's really smart for a point guard to be able to make second and third level reads. Usually a lot of point guards, when they get into pick and roll action, you know, they see the diver. You know, that's, that's the first read. You have a score, you have the dive, the two guys in the action. But being able to make those second, third level reads are, are critical to, to playing at the pro level. Being able to see where the defense is, where they help, um, how much they're helping, how much space you have, being able to make those skip passes over the top is really important. I think Ribeiro's done a good job of that. He's, he's not playing too fast, um, and he's really able to see the floor and make good passes as he collapses the defense. Deflected basketball, and it will go the other way for the Dreamers. And here's the work of Kenny Chen, who obviously not the tallest forward in the league, but certainly a huge piece for the Dreamers. Yeah, you know, Kenny's really physical. You see him a lot of times throughout this last year. He ended up playing at the four spot, but just because of his physicality, willing to do the extra dirty work. You know, like I said, he might not be the normal four that you see, but it goes back to being able to play multiple positions. If he's able to do that, he's able to get more time on the floor. back into the game. Coach, you comment on maybe bringing back one Byron Mullins, even though he wasn't with the team for uh, the majority of the season for the game. Yeah, Byron, he was a guy that I think made a lot of progress. Um, you know, he was essentially in retirement as we brought him back. Obviously, the injury to Chris McCullough really hurt us at the time. I think, you know, Byron did a good job fitting into our system, and he was someone that you know, really enjoyed his time here and being able to bring him back and know what he gives us offensively, defensively, defensively when he's on point, um, I think helps a lot. And, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to see his growth. And he's been a great teammate for all of our guys as well. Our, our locals love him. And he's really trying to push the guys, make them all better. And it's, it's not about him. Rivera with two points on the other end. Certainly is proving to be a very good one-on-one -on -one player, but on the other side, Miller is fouled going to the basket. Hey, you know, defensively for, for young guards, for young point guards, having to guard the pick and roll, since there's so many pick and rolls at the pro level, it's one of the hardest reasons that, you know, young guys can't get on the floor, especially guards, because they struggle so much defensively. You have to learn the angles, you have to learn the physicality, you have to stay in front of the ball. It's, it's not an easy job, but that's something that you have to grow up quick if you want to get on the floor and stay on the floor as a guard. There's Doug Creighton, not going to suit up for any of the preseason games. He is, in fact, one of the most senior members, if not the most senior member at 37 years old. And off, and Rivero hangs in onto it. Odohan and his three. And the rebounding foul, they say it's going to be on Lincoln. So I think one thing Rivero, he's doing really good that I, I notice every time is every time he has the ball, he's not necessarily scoring, but he gets into the paint almost every time. You know, the more you can get the defense to collapse, I've said it over and over again, he's getting his teammates involved. And it might not always show up, you know, in the, in the scorer's stat sheet, but you know, being able to swing out to a corner shooter, drop it off to a big underneath, might be an extra pass. He's getting into the paint constantly, and that's going to be something that you know teams are going to have to do to try to keep him out of the paint so he's not collapsing the defense as much. So Wotan, the player underneath that, was fouled. Missing the first. Maybe because it was a preseason, he had a matchup against Sim Bular almost exclusively, maybe because of rotation minutes, but that's kind of how it goes in the preseason. 
Right, coach, you might have a coach who's like, I just have a set pattern. I want guys to get exactly the minutes I want to get. And uh, that might happen. Yeah, absolutely. Some coaches, you know, they, they, they schedule the minutes out beforehand, how many guys are going to play, when you're going to sub guys in and out. Sometimes you stick to it. Sometimes, you know, it depends what you see in the game. You have certain guys that come in at a, at a certain time, maybe after the first time out, maybe after the seven-minute break. Um, but you miss two, three defensive assignments. Do you want to keep that guy in? Do you want him to learn? Is he a vet that you're going to give a little bit more playing time? Sometimes that changes things. But, yeah, you definitely have some guys that play the minutes regardless of what's going on in the game. On the floater, beautiful make by Mayo. Something, yeah. Coach, you guys had to wait until the second round and even picked up uh, Galton and the undrafted free agent list. But what kind of assessment do you make of maybe the first round of the plus three draft as you guys had a lot of guys in the first season and onto the second season just as strong or? Maybe different players to each? Yeah, I, th I think, you know, obviously we had a lot more draft picks last year for us in particular. Um, you know, we were still able to get one draft pick for us this year. Um, it, it really depends, you know, on the players, the coaches' systems, how these guys fit in, how they practice. Do they have a good work ethic? You know, can they play defense? That's number one thing. Um, we had some really talented guys last year, even, you know, KJ, Chunan, a handful of those guys. Um, Sushi, who was with us as well, um, defensively, it's it's the toughest thing. You want to be able to rely on those guys. So I don't try to put as much of an emphasis on them scoring the basketball, but if you can be sound on defensively, if you can trust them, you're going to give them a little bit more wiggle room on offense and not worry as much if they miss a shot or they force it or if they, you know, make a turnover. But it's it's unique. You know, with, with rookies, you probably have more of a roller coaster season than you'll see with the vets. There's going to be some, some great highs. There's going to be some lows. There's going to be some, you know, peaks and valleys you see throughout rookies. It happens throughout, throughout their seasons, almost at, you know, any level. But with the vets, they're a little bit more steady. So being able to be consistent is really, really important for young fellas. Good defense until in some way pops through the three. And tries to get it right back. Look lead the other way. Some deflections and the pilots get their chance back. Big straight time kill back. And they keep possession. Nice find, but Pointer wants to slow it up. Arrow did a good job until the foul. Gilbeck does a great job of getting his teammates, getting his team extra possessions by, you know, sometimes you're not always going to block a shot, but just being able to alter the shot as well. And, you know, he has great timing. Um, he's always in the right spot. He's big. You know, he, I think he's someone that's really going to grow, and that's why Coach Julius brought him back. Pointer at the line after uh, yesterday's 14 points in a 23 minutes. A tough throw, Rivera out with it. The pilots wall off the offense and go down the court and haul in. Goes it at the rim. Those are ones you really want to convert on. You get a stop on one end, can't end up converting on the other end in transition. Those are the ones that turn into, you know, four point swings from one end to the other. You really want to be able to convert if you get a steal, just like they do here. And then a foul by Pointer, who just coughed it up. And I would say maybe bodied Jackie out of bounds. He didn't exactly shove him out of bounds, but bodied. Yeah, there's a little extra there. Nothing, nothing, nothing too harsh. Just, just a little extra push. A little we'll love tap. It will be called a U, though, as 
one of those, as maybe the audience doesn't know, but Marshawn is a American football fan, but one of those like tackle out of bounds kind of fouls that got to put a little 15 yards on. Right. Yeah. It ends up it ends up being a little one. You know, nothing nothing too serious. But you know, you give the you give the other team uh, you know an extra one at the line, they get to keep possession. Obviously, it's a 20 point game right now in the playoffs. Those are those possessions are you know really really important. You know, any any time you give another team an extra possession, an extra shot, an extra chance to score, um, you're just putting your defense you know in a tough spot. Made free throw, but the Hong Kong didn't find any teammates to high five with. So he's going to get taken out and in his place, stitching out for one last possession. You can definitely see the size difference here on this possession as well. You know, definitely a lot smaller across the board for the pilots. Um, hoping to spread them out. 14 seconds on the shot clock. So unless there's an offensive rebound, they're definitely going to have to, you know, score and get a stop on the other end. a breakdown in the play, so it's going to be Calvin on the handoff. Ayo cuts through, lost it. Pointer with five seconds left, back to Gilbeck, and finishes with two. Essentially, once again, the preseason, so a disastrous possession is a highlight reel for us to talk about. We'll be heading to the fourth quarter. Thanks to Ryan Marshard joining us. He'll stick with us for the fourth. Absolutely, be here for the fourth as well. All right, stick with us. We'll be right back after the break. It's kind of interesting having to, uh, you know, learn when to when. Oh, Alright,最后两颗 好,拿到那个小球的,记得要赶快去我们服务处做循环哦 You know, look at some of the faces in the crowd. Another healthy turnout here in Kaohsiung, Feng San Stadium. I'm Ryan Chen, joined by head coach of the new Taipei Kings, Ryan Marchand. Coach, it's a small league, and certainly the Braves are the repeating champions, but at least from the outside looking in, there seems to be at least storylines with every team and at least the chance of some parity of competitive basketball across 120 games. Yeah, I think it's going to be very competitive throughout this season. Beginning of the season is usually the time when everyone's excited, everything's fresh and new. Last season is is already in the book, so you know that's you know the teams that didn't make the playoffs. That's what they're they're shooting for this year. They want to be in the playoffs. They want to be in the most competitive games they can be in. And you know everyone everyone right now is in the same spot. Obviously, the Braves are the team to beat, but you know it's a fresh season for them as well. Gilbeck with the deflection and the steal. Kenny will lay it in. Another transition basket for the Dreamers. 
those are the ones that you want to convert, just like what the Pilots weren't able to do at the end of the second half. They, they were able to force some turnovers, but not convert. Dreamers were able to force a couple turnovers and convert on the other end. And now Gilbeck with the double team, so we're seeing a lot out of the big man that might be kind of new to him, but certainly effective when he puts in the effort. I think that would, that's what makes him such a good defender. You know, he can protect the basket, he can be out, he can guard in open space. Um, you know, that's critical to, to knowing the angles, being able to guard a lot of space. It allows him to stay on the floor for a long time, too. So even if they have a perimeter-based player, he can guard both. And Justin on the other end, though, knocks down the three. Probably the guy I'm looking at, too, even maybe as a six-man role, make a big, big impact just like second season has all the way and in the history. Brushes that out of bounds. Only one import in the fourth quarter. Yeah, it's it's unique having having one import. Um, you know, there's a lot of different strategy involved by being able to play one guy, only being able to play one guy. Um, it gives your team different looks. You know, are you going big? Do you have you know who's that second import? Is does he have size? Can he guard across the board? Um, you know, which locals are going to be getting more time? There's there's a lot of interesting things just with the fourth quarter and the rules. Big man, Jerry, missing from 45. As you see, both teams running a lot of five out options. You know, there's or initially there's nobody in the paint to be able to protect the basket. Everyone has to guard. It's kind of the modern way of basketball, being able to spread everybody out. You have to guard more space. And, you know, just with those kickouts, do you have good shooters on, on the weak side, being able to knock down a shot? Sometimes guys' roles is just being able to be out there and knock down a shot, just like he did right there. Interesting play design there. They faked the ball screen and became a down screen. It really worked out. I think being able to design different things offensively and defensively, um, you know, being able to design those actions and kind of disguise different things, you know, really forces the defense to communicate. You're going into one action and then you end up going into a different one. The communication has to be high and you always have to be dialed in. Ayo commits a foul. Funny enough, in this case, helping the Dreamers sub Hayden out for Anji. Miller will come in for a kill back. I think one comparison that I can draw, Coach, is that the Dreamers certainly, and the Pilots maybe want to, but the new Type A Kings are, the two aforementioned teams are the teams with the most three-point attempts. And has that been a philosophy of yours personally for several seasons now, as Miller takes the tough shot? And a little iron. You know, for, for us, we never talk about how many threes we want to take. For us, we want to create good opportunities on offense. Um, sometimes we can shoot too many. We can shoot too many too quick. As you see, you know, in transition and five out, sometimes it's easy to get to the paint early and kick it out, and you take the first shot available rather than making the defense work. But for us, we want to create advantages. We want to create good opportunities, and sometimes that ends up being in those open corners. Um, you know, the more you can get layups, the layups, the layups, for a dunk is still the best shot you can take in basketball, but if you can get some wide open, uncontested corner threes, those are just as equally important. And I say uncontested because sometimes people think just taking a corner three is good, but if you have a hand in your face, that shot percentage goes down probably by about 20%. So being able to take uncontested shots with your feet stand still on the ground, those are the ones that we're looking for. 20%, you hear to hear, folks. Well, Aya, after a couple of shifts, will break the three, and the referees will let the Dreamers push it ahead. Ayo to Washburn for a couple times in the fourth quarter resulted in some pilot scores. So they're playing their vets right now, with only Ethan about to check into this fourth quarter. Another case in some way. They're getting a lot of open looks off those baseline, you know, kind of uh, pin-in screens, you know, just running, running shooters along the baseline. If you're switching early or you switch too much, um, you know, sometimes switching defenses are good, but you know, it depends where you're switching. And, you know, if your communication's not good, shooters are going to continue to get open. Afe 
It's a quick fire three and bottom six. So the score is picked up here in the fourth quarter. Keeping count, there's now four on this end of the court, Coach. You might want to put that in the scouting. Air balls <laughs> in front of the yellow seats. Yeah, you know, those those are the ones where, you know, your teammates give you a little bit of a hard time for it. You know, are they tired legs? Are they bad shots? Um, sometimes it's a little bit of both. But, um, yeah, you know, you, you generally want to be able to hit the rim or something close to it to get your offense going. Alvin, Alvin tight one. Not a great angle there. Now six and a half to play. The Dreamers holding steady with the lead again after beating the line here. Miller almost making the runner there. You know, one thing that's not going to show up in the stat sheet as much that Washburn's doing a good job of is his, his pick and roll angles on defense. You know, he's in the middle. He's not over helping too much. There's a foul on the way to the rim. He's not over helping too much and, you know, just being in the right spot, being able to be big. We had Tom Welsh last year who did a great job for it. He knew all the angles. He was in the right spots. And, you know, sometimes you see that angle as a guard and you're trying to get downhill. But just by that big being in the right spot, sometimes that, you know, forces the offense into something else. And he's doing a really good job of that right now. And now the Dreamers are going to take players who scored 15 points in the game. We're going all the way. Kind of a cult hero and sub him on for maybe a future younger cult hero and Jason Wangzi are number eight. all the time now that it's the fall that coaches have different rhythms on the football side of hey Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday have different schedules but what's the basketball preseason in the Ryan Marchand coaching handbook yeah for us what I personally like to do is you know I have a list of certain things I want to accomplish on the offensive side of the ball and the defensive side of the ball in preseason basically for a training camp for us so over the course of time you know, we have a list of might be 10 different things we want to do on offense that are high priority and 10 things on defense that are high priority. Pointer with a steal and a slam. Jumping the kind of lackadaisical pass. As we, as we continue to go through that list, we get better at certain things. Sometimes we need to spend more time on, but ultimately, by the time our first game of the season starts, we want to have all those things in, and then we can grow from there. So right now, it's kind of, we're right in the middle of that phase. We don't have everything in, but we're working on that. And, you know, these games will help us get everything done that we need to offensively and defensively by the time our games in November start. A little bit more energy on the uh, pilot side as Pumpel hit the tough one. Good finish. Able to get the finish. You know, especially, you know, when you're down, you want to see if you can get a little spark. Sometimes, you know, a couple different subs. Obviously, him getting right to the paint, but sometimes going small. Maybe you can speed the other team up a little bit. You can, you know, get a few easy layups. You can get a few steals and you can get a few steals on defense, turn them into easy transition baskets. You have to do something different if it's not working. Rail created a lane. A foul from uh, the third, Ryan, on involved with the basketball game today. Coach, you've coached a little bit across Asia, I guess, in a few stops. Um, do you have any previous experiences or observations about Filipino basketball? I haven't spent time 
coaching there in the Philippines, but I did visit there one time a long time ago, and the one thing I noticed is no matter where I went, there was a basketball court. People seem to love basketball out there. I've seen film on the games and, you know, everything that they've had over there from a basketball perspective, and I think being able to, you know, bring a Filipino player over here, it's definitely going to grow the game. It might be a different market for them to watch. Um, but I know basketball is very, very important to them over there, and obviously he knows he has a very good feel for the game so far, as you can see. Off AC on zone, scores at the poop. Good contain. Winner, though, able to finish. And that's kind of the, you know, good defense, better offense. Yeah, the you know the trail three for especially for fives. It's it's a uh, you know you're always telling your fives to rim run, go straight to the rim. So if you don't have those rim runs, that trail three becomes open a lot, especially when the guards push. So if you have a big, you have a five who's going to be in that spot that can knock it down. It makes your offense much much easier. Jason takes a little bit of a stumble, but his teammates are there. And out of bounds was Longtime member of the Puyan uh, organization, as we see Pong Pong here from the top. You know, he's he's one that's especially with how the rules are in the fourth quarter you see him guarding a lot of imports you know in the fourth quarter especially when you know washburn's out of the game he's going to take that five spot that four spot um he's getting they ask a lot of him you know here with this team so you know it's really important for him if he can make some shots give you a little bit of extra offense as well you know he's strong in the post and can guard um can he improve his pick and roll defense can he knock down you know one or two open shots it's gonna it's gonna really really help that team Way up top. Might have had that one deflected as the clock expires. It's a small lineup for both teams, really. No true centers. I guess Pong Pong traditionally is a center. Yep. I think that's kind of what you get in Taiwan as is, is well. You know, not not a lot of true bigs. Yeah, you, you know, a few guys that are around six seven, six eight, maybe around six nine, but a lot of the a lot of guys aren't true big size, so you know, you have to, especially for those guys, they have to guard much bigger players. They still have to do things that you ask of traditional bigs. So if they can make a difference, if they can post up some of these smaller guards, it definitely helps. Jackie fouls Pointer on the way to the hoop. So we might have, for now, this stretch, both teams going without a lot of size. Yesterday we saw we saw an aerial show between the Dreamers, the Xiangjing, the Steelers also had some guys. It was a really exciting basketball and really great to have for us to open up our preseason with. Yeah, I think you know in the preseason it's it's a perfect time to experiment, see some different lineups. You know, it, you might not be playing all the guys that you're normally going to play. Um, obviously, there's players for each team that's sitting. We're going to be doing the same things, but being able to play some small lineups, some big lineups, um, you know, and this is the chance to be able to see different things, whether you like it or not. And I think that's the one thing I learned from some of the coaches that I've been around is, you know, you might not have the chance during the season where you want to change so many things up. Preseason the perfect time to do it and see different things. Two minutes left. Dobor Shing will come in for pointer. Obviously, this game's a little bit out of hand, but you know, from a coaching perspective, coaches still want to see players put good film, good film on. So, you know, just because it's the end of the game, you don't want to, you know, turn the ball over or play bad defense. You know, for players, sometimes these are the most important minutes for them. So, still being able to put good film on, be able to play hard, make the right reads, know the offense, know the defensive calls. You still want to execute and see how these guys are doing during these last couple minutes of the game. 
sure coaches love having these 50-50 balls, extra possessions, even in oh, 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 jump pass to an open layup for the pilot. Yeah, 50-50 balls are, are a big thing, you know, it's especially, you know, each team's going to have about the same amount of possessions during the game. Offensive rebounds, loose balls, turnovers, that, that changes everything. So anytime you can get an extra possession, you want to be able to get that and convert. Credit to the defense as Rivero missing the fancy one after jumping the pass. Fouled on the way to the hoop, though. About a minute and a half left. Coach, what makes maybe a competitive team different in Taiwan in the Plus League versus maybe your previous experiences of watching basketball on television? I think, you know, the the big thing that I've seen, obviously, here, um, you know, FIBA basketball, and you've probably heard this from a handful of NBA players recently because of the Euro finals and everything, but FIBA basketball is very, very physical. In Taiwan, they allow a lot of physicality, stuff that's, you know, necessarily not allowed in the States in the NBA. I remember one of the last, you know, the last few years in the NBA, obviously it's become a more offensive oriented game, but, you know, any sort of hand checking above the free throw line is an automatic foul. You allow a little more contact below the free throw line. But as you see here, those rules don't exist. You know, you're allowed to get your hand into a guy and basically ride him for 94 feet. And sometimes the rep will never call it. So the physicality is definitely a big thing here in Taiwan and just international basketball in general. After a made basket by the Dreamers, they get a stop as anticipating the end of this one. Just a couple left. Good skip. Out to Jason. Hitting the iron and out. Ricky Iso, just a foul. They did have one to give. And another one, actually. As you can hear the coaches saying, you know, all switching, end of the game, end of the possession, um, you know, makes it easier when there's only, you only have a chance for about two, three passes and a couple dribbles. Being able to switch, you don't have as much chance for a mismatch and post, post up underneath. So being able to switch is, is very, very easy towards the end of a possession. They'll just dribble the clock out and uh, Pleasure, Coach Marchand, to have you on the broadcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. Best I good luck on the game coming up and the rest of the season, of course. We look forward to hearing more from you. But we'll break things down after a commercial break. Fans, stick with us as we have a post-game player interview as Marchand's Kings make it onto the court. Definitely a unique situation preseason having multiple games. It's, as Plus League is all about the home and away, so only one game usually would take place. And uh, we're being told the Mandarin broadcast duo has figured out who they want to have. And it'll be Kings Braves coming up. Schedule start of that game is slated for 5 p.m. And the player to be interviewed, I believe, will be Wu Song Wei all the way. While we wait, Coach, is there a, maybe a really strong locker room guy that you can shout out in just his name? I think for us, Shao Li, who's been with us, he's a really, really strong locker room guy. 
All right, there is Wu Songwei. 呃，因为去年受伤嘛，然后几乎一整季都没什么机会上场，然后今年休赛季又特别认真去训练，他希望可以弥补脚受伤这个状况。那今天教练也给我蛮多机会，然后队友也很很哇哇，哈哈哈哈哈，伸手伸手。就很很很帮我制造很多机会啊！就一拍空档，然后今天都有把握到这样。Taking advantage of those open shots. <笑>呃，他们两个像阿吉是比较主攻嘛，然后嘉俊是组织比较多一点。那其实跟他们两个配合起来都蛮舒畅的，对啊。加入老吴以后，整个球队都组织的蛮蛮顺的。Fluidity and flow with the team. Now being congratulated for his wedding in the off season. 呃，这这是计划中嘛，这是一步一步来。那好不容易完成的人生大事又碰上疫情，好不容易终于完成了，所以有新身份就有新的新的更大的责任，这样希望可以努力的做得更好，这样对。Taking things step at a time. Uh, 应该还没那么快啊，<笑>对啊，谢谢，谢谢，谢谢，谢谢。So all the way, and the Dreamers head out from Macaulay, two and zero in the preseason. We'll segment for the next game. Thanks for joining us. Stick. <laughs> Final word for Coach Marshawn of the New Taipei Kings joining me on this English broadcast. Thanks, Coach, for joining us. We, of course, got to wrap things up properly to make it a full broadcast. On the screen is Xiao Hu and Taipei on the Mandarin side, but 
Coach, um, maybe a word on the prospects. If you're a Pilots fan and if you're a Dreamers fan, what would you what do you see out of these two teams? And as a professional opinion, how do they look heading into the season? Yeah, I think if you one, if you're a fan of the Dreamers, obviously it didn't look like they lost a beat going in from last season. They got some you know new and fresh faces there, but being able to come out here, handle business, they played a lot of their main guys, and you know building that chemistry early is is really important. So them being able to handle business is good. Um, and the pilots are kind of in a similar situation to where we were, you know, as the Kings last year. You have a new coach, you have a new system. Um, you saw some positive things, and the players are obviously still learning the system, but once they get clicking, you know, I think it's going to be really, really big for them to just build and trust the coach throughout the year. Um, it can take a while to put a new system in, but being able to do that, I think there's positives for both teams moving forward. All right, the next game coming up is the New Taipei Kings against the Taipei Golden Braves. Coach, uh, real quickly, how do you plan on building from the first season onto your second season as a team, heading on to that possible title? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think for us, the big thing is, you know, having, having more time to put different install in on both sides of the ball. Didn't have the chance to do that last year, and so for us, now we get to work on doing some things that aren't as conventional that you would normally see, and so, you know, if things aren't conventional, if things aren't going our way, this is what we get to work on right now. Um, you know, we're very vanilla throughout the preseason. What I mean by that is, you know, we don't show a lot of the stuff that we normally do throughout the season for scouting sake, um, but we still have stuff to work on and know we can get better. So we're going to give different players the opportunity to get some minutes to see what they can do. And, you know, ultimately we'll see how we fare throughout these two games here in the preseason.